Hello, everyone. This is another Black Conservative. I'm Ryan Bowen, and thank you all for joining me. Let's get right down to it. I want to read you an article that I read in uh, Breitbart News. By the way, this is, I think, his, uh, I think, the, I think, 40th year anniversary. So, uh, of, so, of the 40th anniversary of his death, the founder of Breitbart News. So, congratulations to the um, the actual news site itself, but also I want to honor him myself. So, we just want to, I just want to bring that out. But I want to, I want to, in this video, I want to talk about some, to me, which is, to me, it's good news. And that is Chicago Mayor Laura Lightfoot loses the bid for a second term in office. I want to clap right now. I, I'm, in a, I'm in a secluded place, but I really want to clap and shout and like jump because even though I'm not a Chicago resident, that's good news. But let's go further. Let's go further in this. I'm going to read you this article. Says Chicago Mayor Laura Lightfoot failed to secure enough votes to advance to the runoff on Tuesday, losing her bid for a second term in office, according to an Associated Press projection. Lightfoot becomes the first Chicago mayor to lose a bid for re-election in 40 years, when former mayor Jane Bernie was ousted in 1983. Lightfoot's loss sets up former Chicago Public Schools CEO Paul Vallis and Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson for a head-to-head face-off in the runoff election on April 4. Lightfoot's first term in office was marked by the coronavirus pandemic and a massive increase in crime. I mean, and let's be realistic. I mean, every time you turn around, there was something going on in Chicago. Am I right? Tell me I'm wrong. Every time you turn around, someone was getting shot. You know, like left and right, someone getting shot, someone getting shot, someone getting shot. But I'm going to the detail of my commentary later on. But let's get right into this article. Let's to continue this article. It says, Laura has had her chance. Since Laura Lightfoot has been in office, it seems like crime has gotten worse. 45-year-old Chicago resident Linnell Jolly told the Associate Press. In 2022, Lightfoot's Chicago record, Chicago recorded, it is now, 723 murders a 95% increase in vehicle thefts, a 50% 50 increase in theft, and 10% increase from the previous year in burglary and robbery. The crime wave has continued into 2023 as the first homicide of the year occurred just 90 minutes into the new year. Now, you know, that, that it could be argued, you can't stop every murder that's taking place, but I'm gonna get into the detail of that a little later. In addition, the first 22 days of 2023 saw a significant increase in crime as Bright Bright News reported. Um, it says in just 22 days, there have been 2,189 cars stolen. That's nearly 100, 100 car thefts per day. Compared to the first 22 days of 2022, that's a 165% jump. Compared to the first 22 days of 2019, that is a not a typo, 349% increase. Despite consistently polling in third place, Lightfoot was recently recorded dancing at a Lunar New York Parade, New Year, New York, New Year Parade in January. Now I'm pretty sure she knew of these dismal, this dismal record she had, but here she is living it up. Can you believe? It's it's hard to believe how these people who make up the elite. Well, you know what? Let me take that back. It's not hard to believe because they are part of the elite. Those who are part of the elite, they don't care. But let me. I'm I'm I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm I'm going off right now. Let me let me let me slow down. I'm going to get into the detail of the attitude of the elite in a minute here, but let's just go on. Here she is, living it up. There's more numbers. No one wants to support you and you're living it up. Let's go. Vallis earned approximately... Vallis earned approximately 35% of the vote when he was projected to advance to the next stage. Johnson earned close to 20% of the vote, while Lightfoot came in third place at roughly 17%. Valet's tough on crime campaign included calls for adding hundreds of police officers to patrol Chicago, the Associate Press detail. But here's something that needs to be looked at. On the other hand, Johnson has aligned himself with radical defund the police movements despite later backtracking his support for that position. And that's the end of that article right there. Now, what's crazy about that is the fact that this guy that's running up against him, I'm wondering if I don't, the article did not say whether or not he was liberal or whatever. I'm going to assume he's liberal. 
And that goes to show you that all Democrats are not as crazy as other Democrats. It goes to show you that, that, that some of them have a brain, that some of them don't have these radical far left wor uh, uh, worldviews such as defunding the police. Now, according to his article, he, he had aligned himself with uh, organizations and individuals that wanted to defund the police, but all of a sudden he retracted his uh, statement. Now, that could be, that could be, the retraction could be that he's getting pressure from, from, from the voters in Chicago. And the voters in Chicago are like, wait a minute, man, no, 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 no. Or it could be that he's lying. It could be that, hey, I got, I need to get these people's votes. So let me go ahead and tell them that I'm going to put 100 new police officers on, on the streets. And when I, you know what I'm saying, let me tell them that to get their votes. And then when I get in office, do the same thing. If this person is a liberal, which I'm going to assume they are, that's running against Lightfoot, Heavy foot, poo foot, slew foot, whatever. Okay, then I, I'm, I'm shaky about that. I'm shaky about that because it's like, okay, now let me get to let me get to the idea of the elite, and I'm going to connect this to this idea that this this valet this valet's guy uh, was a part of supported to defund the defunding, uh, police groups. The elite, those at the top of the pyramid, do not believe in right and wrong. They believe right and wrong is for the peons, people like you and I. They're under, see, they believe that they are, they are the, at the top of the food chain. Many of these people in the elite believe that because of their money and because of their education, they're better than you and I. I'm not making this stuff up. This is literally how they believe. And I'm not going to go into all the detail of how dark some of these people's hearts actually are, but this is what they believe. Because of that, they will lie to people like you and I at the drop of the hat to get votes. Then once they get in office, what you gonna do? What, 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 what is the average person going to do once these people, these lying far left radicals get in office, or anybody for that matter, get in office and, 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 and flip the script on everybody? What are you gonna do? You can try to do a recall, but that was done with um, governor um, of California. The governor of California was supposed to be a recall to get him out. Larry Elder ran against him, and he was winning, and all of a sudden, the money started coming in for, this, for the governor of California. Bam, he was back in. And I couldn't help but wonder, why in the world would anybody vote for that man when you can clearly see that his policies are failing the people? I don't know. I'm not a Californian, so I can't even say. But the point is, is that the elite will lie to you because they don't believe in right or wrong. Now, in reference to this, this man that is, this Vallis, Vallis who's uh, running against Laura Lightfoot, she's out of it, thank God, okay? And I'm not even a Chicagoan, and I'm glad she's out of it. But she's out of it. Uh, uh, if, if he's a liberal, and he's a part of that elite, he could have been a part of the elite echelon, he could have been telling the people, you know what, I'm gonna put 100 police officers on the street, okay, to get their votes, and then when he get in office, flip the script on them. I don't know. I hope and pray that that's not the case. But but here's the deal. Here is a straight out deal, folks. Both Republicans and Democrats are guilty of this kind of mindset. Now, somebody may say, "Well, wait a minute. You, well, you aren't you a Republican? No, I'm a conservative. This is a conservative uh, 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 a YouTube channel. Another black conservative. That's the title right there. I am a staunch conservative." Okay, but conservatism has to do with the way of life and a worldview. Republican has to do with politics. Okay, if you are Republican and you're supporting radical views, I'm not going to support you. If you are Republican and you're someone that's just hungry for money and don't care about the people and will tell the people anything they want to hear, and then when you get in office, you flip the script on them, I will not support you. Both Republicans and Democrats over the decades have been guilty of inflating our economy. Both of them have been guilty. And let me say something else in reference to these elites, which are, which are composed of both Republicans and Democrats. I was reading an article not too long ago from Bright Bright News about a lady doing, I think it was a, some type of a congressional hearing, where she was, the, uh, her sons, her two sons, I think 18 and 21, had died from fentanyl poisoning. 
and she's here and she's crying out to the to the lawmakers and crying out to this co this committee and crying out to them and talking about why you guys leaving the borders open nobody's fighting for the for us common people and why you leaving the borders open and what's going on i mean she's really crying her heart out she's really pouring her heart out to these politicians on both the left and the right pouring her heart out right <coughs> excuse me so when she's finished pouring her heart out one of these politicians, I don't know if he was a Democrat or Republican, gets up and completely rejects everything this lady says. In other words, he gets up, and even though this woman has poured her heart out about the open borders and about the inflow of fentanyl coming into our country, unknown to a lot of the Border Patrol officers and so forth, because the borders are so open and laxed, and laxed he totally dis, he totally rejects what she says about this. He totally rejects what she said about her two sons dying from fentanyl poisoning. And I can't recall everything this, this politician said, but he was like, big deal. In, in so many ways, this politician was like, big deal. Okay, she cried out. And what's my point? My point is this, once again, these elite politicians do not care for you and I. If they're paid for by the, by the international banking families, if they're paid for by the multinational corporations, if they're paid for by these lobbying groups, okay, they don't care about you and I. Now the solution is this, because they don't, let me, let me, let me retract. They don't care about you and I because they're paid for and they're controlled and because they're part of the elite, they believe that they're superior to you and I. Because of their education and their money, they believe that you and I can't run our own lives and that they need to be in office no matter what the case may be, okay? Case in point with this woman here that I've just mentioned who had who, who was crying out to this uh, committee in Congress, okay? My point is this. Let me end the video on this note. I believe that the solution is, and I've said this before, bring God back into our society, bring God back into the schools, Bring God back into the White House, but that's not going to happen more than likely unless God himself comes in and performs some great, awesome miracle. But on a surface level, what we can do is look out for our children ourselves, fight for ourselves, create our own type of organizations, create our own type of groups. Stop letting these politicians and these elite control and run our lives. Be the control of our own destiny. Be the control of your own destiny. Stop letting these politicians control your destiny. Stop letting these politicians tell you you're a victim. That's why I feel like Trump, even though he's considered to be a part of the elite because he's rich, very, very rich, he seems at this point to be an outsider. In fact, he's 30 points over Ron DeSantis, and I like Ron DeSantis. But I believe Ron DeSantis is a part of the elite. He's still paid for it, okay? He hasn't but so, ain't but so much Ron DeSantis is going to be able to do. Now, if Trump is largely paying for his own campaign his second time, time around like he did with his first time, first term, then more than likely it's going, we're, going to, we're going to get the same Trump we got in the first term, and that's prosperity. Let's be realistic. Let's be realistic. That's what we're going to get, okay? But that's what I wanted to say right there. I'm glad that this woman is gone. Even though I'm not a Chicagoan, I'm glad that she's, she, that's it for her. And I'm, and I'm hoping that Americans all over the country will see that these far left radical policies from these far left radical politicians are destroying the country. And I hope and pray that a lot of these so-called Republicans will start manning and womaning up and having some backbone and saying, look, I'm not going to succumb to your lies and trickery. I'm not going to succumb to these activist groups and these crazy far-left activist groups. I'm not going to walk in fear. I'm not going to walk and live in fear and degradation. I'm going to have some backbone. I'm going to stand for the people like the Constitution said you are supposed to do. Hopefully, people will see the light. But I'm glad she's gone. I'm glad. So let's hope this spreads all over the country, all right? So I just wanted to put my comments on. I just wanted to talk about that. I'm really glad that she's out of it <laughs> because I got tired, sick and tired of reading article after article after article after article after article of people getting shot and killed. I got tired of it. Okay? So that's what I wanted to say that. Also, let me say this also in reference to, and I meant to say this before I close this video, about 
the crime rate in Chicago. Now, obviously, the crime, you know, you're going to have crime in every, whether it's run by Republicans and run by Democrats, you know, they can't stop people from committing crimes. However, they can promote and encourage and push for policies to the city councils, okay, that will be more stricter on these crimes and keep these people behind bars like they're supposed to be and stop slapping them on the wrist because you assume they're impoverished and that poverty is causing them to commit these crimes. That's a bunch of nonsense. That's what could be done. And in the case of Laura Lightfoot, she was not doing that. Case in point, it is what it is. But that's what I wanted to say about that. What do you guys think? Leave your comments in the comment section below. Like, share, and subscribe to my channel. God bless you all, and see you again.